Today's episode of A Brief History is sponsored by Squarespace. Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out more information. Hello and welcome to another episode of A Brief History. Today's episode, Telltale Games. Ready, set, go. March 3rd, 2004. Having spent nearly two decades revolutionizing the gaming market with their classic point-and-click adventures, game development company LucasArts makes a pretty sudden decision to just totally drop the genre that built their legacy. Even full-out canceling a sequel to one of their most beloved games, Sam and Max Hit the Road. And this did not sit well with LucasArts employees Dan Connors, Kevin Bruner, and Troy Molander, who just said frickin' screw this noise and left LucasArts to start their own company by the name of Telltale Games. Founded in San Rafael, California, Telltale Games aimed to keep the point-and-click adventure genre alive into the 2000s. So naturally, their first game was a poker simulator. Obviously. Pick up card. Use card on player. Activate the magic card, Pot of Greed! It allows me to draw two more cards! Okay, but really, Telltale Texas Hold'em was just a glorified test of the company's in-house engine. And Telltale had bigger fish to fry. Er, I guess cats to gut. And those cat guts came in the form of Telltale's first real games, a series of point-and-click adventure games based on Jeff Smith's Bone comic and the crime drama CSI. But like, not at the same time. They were separate, separate games, not the same. That'd be cool though. Games which saw kind of mixed reviews, but proved that Telltale could tackle a licensed property and end up with a game that was actually decent. But the company's real big break came in mid-2005 when Telltale Telltale were approached by the creator of Sam and Max, Steve Purcell. As it turned out, LucasArts' claim on the Sam and Max license had actually expired, and Purcell was interested in passing the license on to Telltale. And considering that the cancellation of Sam and Max 2 was the reason for the company's founding, Telltale, of course, threw water in Steve Purcell's face and slammed the door on him. And then they made the game anyway. I'm just kidding, Telltale was actually stoked to work with Purcell, but that, it's, it's not as funny. So come October 17th, 2006, Telltale put out Sam and Max Save the World, Episode 1. That's right, with Sam and Max, Telltale decided to release the game episodically, with six total episodes released between late 2006 and early 2007. This unique format, mixed with the game's clever writing and streamlined point-and-click gameplay, made Sam and Max Save the World Telltale's first critical hit, a fitting return to the cult classic franchise. So naturally, with the success under their belt, Telltale moved into working on more episodic point-and-click games, including sequels to Sam and Max, as well as games based on Homestar Runner, Wallace and Gromit, and even another classic LucasArts franchise, Monkey Island. And while none of these games really set the world on fire, they still received generally positive reviews and helped solidify Telltale's place in the gaming market. However, their games were still very much niche products rather than massive blockbusters. On top of this, the company felt that they were ready to shift away from the more comedic games that they were known for and try their hands at more dramatic storytelling. And they decided to start this shift off with a bang, striking a deal with Universal Studios to create games based on two of their most classic franchises, Back to the Future and Jurassic Park. And so, in December of 2010 and November of 2011 respectively, Telltale began two new episodic game series, Back to the Future the Game and Jurassic Park the Game. Really flexing their creative title muscles there. And and wow, talk about two polar opposites. On one hand, Telltale's Back to the Future was the company's biggest hit yet and is often viewed as the fourth Back to the Future movie that we never got. But then, on the other hand, you had Telltale's Jurassic Park, which wasn't even a point-and-click adventure game. The game played out more like an interactive movie, with gameplay mainly focused on character interaction and quick time events. And this new format did not sit well with fans, nor did the game game's forgettable characters or narrative. People said it was trying and failing to be like Heavy Rain, and they really did not like it. So Telltale's initial attempt to shift into more dramatic storytelling was kinda rocky. Back to the Future did great for the company, but Jurassic Park kinda bombed. But despite the criticism, Telltale seemed determined to stick with their new Jurassic Park format and make it work. And come April of 2012, 
Telltale launched their newest series, this time based on Robert Kirkman's The Walking Dead. Telltale's Walking Dead took most of its cues from Jurassic Park as opposed to the more successful Back to the Future. Puzzles were scarce, and the real focus was on the writing, story, and character development. The game was built around relationships, character interactions, and, most notably, making tough choices. The real selling point of the game was how elements of the story changed based on decisions made by the player. But unlike Jurassic Park, The Walking Dead's characters and story resonated with players on a completely unprecedented level. And because of this, the game absolutely blew up. Telltale's Walking Dead received incredible critical acclaim, sold millions of copies per episode, has been lauded as one of the greatest games in its genre, and helped bring Telltale into the gaming mainstream for the very first time. And I mean, look at this! This game <laughs> is from the same people as this game. You've been doing a spot of gardening, have you, Miss Flick? Working my green fingers to the bone. But the hard work appears to be paying off. Indeed it does. It's freaking crazy! So, as you might imagine, the outstanding performance of The Walking Dead marked a permanent shift in how Telltale made games. And the company was now known more for their interactive stories than for their puzzles. A change which did leave some point-and-click traditionalists out in the cold, but was a rousing success for the company. Following the release of Walking Dead, Telltale's pool of available properties to gamify grew exponentially. On top of making multiple sequels to their flagship Walking Dead series, Telltale was also able to put their stamp on franchises like Fables with The Wolf Among Us, as well as Borderlands, Game of Thrones, Batman, Guardians of the Galaxy, and even freaking Minecraft. It was like a renaissance for the company. At least, at first. You see, between 2013 and 2017, Telltale put out a whopping 11 games. And you can't release that many games using the same formula without sparking some burnout. Yeah, that's right, the same formula for four years. I mean, like, I mean, uh, who, uh, who, who would even do that? For as many games as Telltale released since The Walking Dead, pretty much every single one was made using the same gameplay setup, the same engine, and were always, always based on pre-existing properties. Never anything new or original. And after so many games of the same basic stuff, the cracks in Telltale's formula started to become more apparent. It did it didn't take long before players began to realize that this whole branching narrative angle that Telltale Games sold themselves on wasn't really that accurate, with many people feeling that their choices made little to no impact on the outcome of the game. Combine all this, and it's pretty easy to see why people may have been losing interest in Telltale's games. But none of that is to say that Telltale was making bad games. I mean, yeah, some of their games were better than others but it's not like Telltale had forgotten how to tell a good story. And moving into 2018, Telltale actually seemed to have a pretty strong lineup going. Wolf Among Us 2, a Stranger Things series, and even a finale season for The Walking Dead. It seemed like they were getting ready to kick things up a notch. But unfortunately, Telltale burnout was really starting to affect the company. Games weren't selling as well as they used to, their reputation was sour, and investors were even starting to pull their support from the company. Behind the scenes, things were apparently going south fast. And come September 21st, 2018, Telltale dropped a bit of a bombshell, abruptly announcing a majority studio closure. Over 200 company employees were being laid off right then and there. And after a skeleton crew of only 25 people finished a Minecraft project with Netflix, the Telltale doors would shut for good. And despite knowing bits and pieces of the company's struggles beforehand, this shutdown was still a massive shock to the gaming community. Things went from 60 to zero in like a second. Suddenly, the Walking Dead finale, which was mid-season by the way, was just cancelled. Though apparently it's gonna be finished by Skybound now? This whole situation has been kind of a mess to follow. But 
Oh god, it does not get better from there. It was bad enough that Telltale was going under, but in the wake of their announcement, it came out that the hundreds of workers being laid off were given absolutely no warning or severance. And as the news cycle went on, more and more allegations either came out or resurfaced, claiming that Telltale was a mismanaged and toxic workplace where employees were often worked to the bone for no added benefit. And on top of all this, there's now a class action lawsuit being filed against Telltale over these layoffs and lack of support for their employees. So let's just say Telltale's relationship with the industry has changed. And God, it's just a massive shame because if you ask me, going strictly off of the games, Telltale was one of the most important developers of the last couple decades. Without them, the point and click adventure genre would have fallen completely by the wayside. And without The Walking Dead's influence, some of my all-time favorite games would just straight up not exist. But by the end, the Telltale story is kinda tragic. And unfortunately, the mismanagement, poor treatment of employees, and abrupt closing will likely greatly overshadow the legacy of Telltale's games for a very long time. But at the end of the day, after 14 years, 33 games, and for better or for worse, we will remember Telltale games. Thanks for watching guys, DFTBA. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video on Telltale Games. It's been quite a long time since my last gaming episode of A Brief History, so I really hope you liked it. And real quick before I go, I want to give a massive shout out to our sponsor for this episode, Squarespace. Let's be real, by now, I think we all know about Squarespace. If you're wanting to start a website for yourself or your business, Squarespace boasts an awesome all-in-one platform that gives you all the tools you need to to make that happen. Plus, they have tons of designer templates to help make your website look beautiful and professional. It's easy, there's no hard coding necessary. Basically, if you've got a website idea, Squarespace has got you covered. Fun fact, way back in like 2010, 2011, Squarespace was actually the first company I ever saw sponsoring a YouTuber. So these guys have been supporting online creators for a very long time, which I absolutely love. So if if you've been waiting and waiting to bring that website idea in the back of your head to life, then go to squarespace.com right now to start a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, be sure to head to squarespace.com slash foot of a ferret and use the code ABH to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. So big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, big thanks to you guys for watching, do stay tuned to the channel because my next brief history is gonna be a... A creative one. And I think that's about it, so I'll say it again, guys. Thanks for watching, and DFTBA.